So, so I, I, I do think that there's like, there's the possibility of reconciliation here, even though you won't find SCOTUS ever approving that language of a real distinction between essence and existence. Yeah, that's really helpful. Let's it, we're going to go into some tall grass metaphysics here, gentle listeners. But I think you'll you'll enjoy this because this is something I've been thinking about a fair amount. Uh, part of it, uh, I've seen some people suggest that, like, hey, once you um, make it clear that uh, real distinction doesn't entail ontological separability, then um, it seems like SCOTUS might be totally on on board, right? That we're yeah. not talking that there's like two really distinct things, entities in and of themselves. Uh, most Thomas nowadays, even if certain Thomas ha did go off the, the rails with this, would say these are not complete entities in and of themselves. They're sort of interpenetrating, incomplete co-constituents of a thing, really distinct because they play really distinct functional roles where one is irreducible to the other. You know, one plays a role of unity, the other plays a role of diversity or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but not separable. Um I don't, so maybe you maybe have some thoughts on that. Maybe that's what SCOTUS was objecting to. I'm just so not a SCOTUS scholar. I can't I can't say, but I'm curious to hear from the SCOTUS scholars if that was really the objection. Was it the objection that to the idea that if you have real distinction, you have separate things or what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 sounds right to me as a, a I think, a, a happy way of describing what Aquinas's position actually is. And if that is the view, then. It's uh, it's ultimately compatible with SCOTUS. The um, but but there's this other issue, related issue about you know what exactly is is it to be really distinct? Not just with respect to the essence existence issue, but just real distinction as such. Um, a common way of describing what that distinction is is in, is precisely in terms of separability. If you right. have separable things, then they are really distinct. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that that's <laughs> correct. Uh, and here's why. I, I think that everyone in the tradition, and by, by which I mean medieval scholasticism, um, uh, would have to hold that there is a real distinction between the persons of the Trinity, mm -hmm. but they're not separable from each other. Right. Um, and so there, there's your counter example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, someone like Occam has a view about the relationship between uh, faith and reason, according to which he's happy to just let God counter examples just be sort of one-offs or flukes. Right. You know, so, uh -huh. Like he he argues ad nauseum against um, real relations, uh, but then can't do Trinitarian metaphysics without real relations. So, <laughs> well, there there are real relations in God, but n nowhere else. Um, same, you know. And the, but the, but yeah. So that's that's I think something that both uh, both Aquinas and Scotus have a view about faith and reason, where there has to be a. a uh, the the tools, the metaphysical tools that we use to think about the divine nature have to be the, the same tools that we use to think about anything else. And so if we, um, if we're uh, anti-realists about relations on purely metaphysical grounds, we shouldn't incorporate them into our Trinitarian metaphysics. Similarly, if we um, are, if we have an account of real distinction um, that we, that's in our metaphysical toolkit to carve up the world. And we're committed dogmatically to the a real distinction between Trinitarian persons. Well, then that has got to inform like how we interpret what it means to be really distinct. Now, in fact, in almost every case of just like ordinary heuristic kinds of examples, we would talk about really distinct things as separable things mm -hmm. like, the, the coffee that's in my cup and the cup. They're mm -hmm. really distinct from each other. And the, the, the way to show that is to dump the coffee out and you still have the coffee and you have the cup, but that's not like what it is to be really distinct. Um, this gets tricky. So that so you're probably wondering, well, then what is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, someone like, uh, if, if you think about real distinction, um, 
in relationship to formal distinction, mm -hmm. um, this gets this gets really hard. You know, the with in the case of formal distinction, it looks like there too we want to talk about it in terms of separability, but here say that uh, merely formally distinct things are inseparable from each other. Um, even though that complexity obtains, you know, in the thing and not in our way of thinking about it, whereas right. really distinct things are, 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 um, separable. Yeah. But, but even there, I don't think that's the best account of the formal distinction in SCOTUS, um, would define it in terms of inseparability. So for it's example, um, uh, Thomas would say, well, um, you can have clearly distinct things um, that are necessarily co-occurring, um, triangularity and um, uh, trilaterality, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, what would that be? Would that just be a formal distinction for the SCOTUS? Because then if so, then I just would think, well, oh, for Thomas, the notion of real distinction is wide enough to just include the formal distinction. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's an interesting proposal. I, I think that the trilaterality, triangularity would be formally distinct features mm -hmm. of the triangle. I, I think you're right about that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In, in now, now Aquinas, at least in the sentences commentary, um, I, perhaps he backed away from it later, but he has a, uh, a kind of distinction that he there calls a distinction of reason ex parte rei. Mm -hmm. Um, and he describes it as uh, in, in some ways similar to the way that Scotus sometimes describes formal distinction. And, and the idea is there is that uh, uh, concepts that are, that are fully separable in our own minds, say uh, wisdom and love, uh, where they obtain in God, they are, of course, really the same as mm -hmm. each other. It's a sort of standard feature. Divine simplicity entails that. Yep. But there is some kind of, um, there's something in the thing that uh, answers to the minds carving them up in the way that it does. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, a distinction of reason, but unlike an ordinary distinction of reason, it's a distinction of reason ex parte rei. Now, um, the, the great SCOTUS scholar, Alan Wolter, has a wonderful essay um, from a long time ago highlighting this type of distinction in, in Aquinas and suggesting, I think, plausibly that it is um, the same kind of metaphysical tool that SCOTUS's formal distinction is. Interesting. 